It was Saturday and the crew were in the spaceship tree planning a mission. There was a big map of the moon on the table and the four crew members were studying it intently. That's the Sea of Tranquility, said Chris, pointing. It's where astronauts first landed on the moon. There are some mountains, said Ivy. I wonder if the astronauts climbed them. I wonder if you could drive a buggy into one of those craters and back up the other side, asked Finney. The crew continued talking and pointing out interesting things on the moon map, when suddenly they heard a plop sound on the roof. They looked at each other, then up at the roof. Plop! They heard it again, and again, and again. Plop, plop, plop! Action stations! shouted Chris. We could be under attack! Ivy quickly folded the moon map. They could hear a whirring noise now, like the sound of an engine. The crew took their posts. Chris stood beside the ship's wheel. Vinny stood by the window, trying to see what was causing all the drama. Ivy sat down at the computer, and Kara stood by the door, in case she had to do a spacewalk. The crew stood still and listened. The whirring noise and the things dropping on the roof seemed to have stopped. They stood very still, listening. Eggins, Vinny's therapy dog, gave a little whine. Shh, Eggins, said Chris. We have to be really quiet in case... Eggins whined again, a little louder this time. He hears something, said Vinny. Sure enough, the whirring sound had started again. Then they heard... Plop, 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 plop. It's back, shouted Chris. Everyone, stay in your positions. Suit up, Kara. Kara put on her helmet and jetpack and quickly put her tool belt around her waist. I'm ready, she said. Okay, said Chris. Out you go. Kara carefully went through the airlock and opened the door. The whirring noise was louder. A large dark object was flying above the spaceship tree, dropping things on the roof. She looked around. Something landed heavily on her head and fell onto the deck of the spaceship tree. Ouch! She said loud. She looked at the object, which had come to stop near the edge of the deck. She took the folding tongs from her tool belt. More objects were being dropped on the spaceship tree. Plop! 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 Ara quickly grabbed the one that had landed on her with the tongs. She put it in a plastic bag that she took from a pouch on her tool belt. She went back inside the spaceship tree and into the airlock. Decompress! shouted Ivy. Kara made a hissing noise with her mouth, like air escaping from a balloon. Once inside, she took the plastic bag with the object over to the table and placed it inside a clear plastic box which was waiting on the table. She put the lid on the box and began to remove her helmet and jetpack. The box had holes on the sides with gloves fitted into them so that the crew could handle things in the box without touching them. They all looked at the object in the box. It's an orange, said Ivy. It landed on my head, said Kara. The spaceship tree isn't an orange tree, said Vinny. Where did it come from? I think there was a drone out there, said Kara. A big one. It was carrying these oranges and dropping them on us. We are under attack, said Chris. Everybody, suit up and power up the mini drones. We're going out there. The crew all put their helmets and jetpacks on and took the mini drones out of their cases. At Chris's instructions, they all went through the airlock and out to the deck of the spaceship tree was nowhere in sight. Now we wait, said Chris. Eggins had stayed inside, but the crew heard him begin to whine. I think it's coming back. Eggins can hear it, said Vinny. The whirring sound grew louder. Suddenly, there it was, heading towards them with a fresh load of oranges. I see it, shouted Ivy. Okay, everyone, mini drones ready, whispered Chris. It's not dropping any more oranges on us today. The big drone came buzzing through the gap in the branches where the crew pointed their telescope on clear nights. No, shouted Chris. Each crew member launched a mini drone from their hands. They flew them towards the big drone and bumped it, forcing it back out of the gap of the branches.
They withdrew and flew at it again, this time sending it back across the yard and over the fence. The mini drones chased it over the fence and bumped it again for good measure. It dropped its load of oranges and the crew heard cries of Ouch! That hit my nose! Coming from the other side of the fence. The voices sounded suspiciously like Chris and Vinny's older brother Ben and his friend Rowena from across the road. They watched as the big drone descended and disappeared behind the fence. The crew flew their mini drones back over the fence to the spaceship tree. They went inside through the airlock and put their helmets and jetpacks away. They plugged the mini drones in so they would be ready for the next mission. That was a drone dilemma, said Ivy. The others nodded their head in agreement. Ivy unfolded the big map of the moon and the crew continued their discussion of craters, mountains and lunar seas. If they had still been outside, they may have seen Rowena's father appear saying, Rowena, have you seen my new drone? The big one that can carry things. The one I told you not to play with? Ben and Rowena looked at each other, then at the big drone, now sitting on the grass next to them. They were about to experience another kind of drone dilemma, but this one would not have the crew of the spaceship tree to solve it.